Hey, hey, welcome back to another Life by You video. And this is going to be a little different. This is going to be kind of a comparison of everything that has changed since the beginning of Life by You's development and where it is now. So I'm taking a lot of clips from the videos I made and the videos that I watched and just comparing how the UI has changed, how character creator has changed, how everything has changed. And then we're just going to like talk about that and see how we feel about it. Just so you can kind of get a really good look at the progress and the changes that the game has made over the past eight months that we have seen the game. This is also going to not showcase anything from 2024 or reference anything from 2024. I know this video is a little bit late, but it is still something I wanted to get up there because I think it's very important to kind of keep an eye on and see all this fun stuff um, and how it has changed and developed over time. So first I want to take a look at the character customization screens and how that has changed. You can tell that this was early on. This was when they had the darker color scheme and it didn't feel as like fresh and new. And I really like how it looks now. And I think that the UI still could use some improvement, but I don't think it's as bad as it was uh, from the initial videos that we saw. There is a lot of different things that they have updated. I think the color wheel, it was swatches, and then you could also click and uh, kind of open up another color wheel. Now it's more like just a color wheel and you can change the saturation and the lightness. And also there's like multiple ways of uh, doing so. And I thought that is a much better way of doing it. You can also type in the code uh, if you know the RGB code and all that. And you can also add colors as custom colors down there, which is a great addition to being able to customize and being able to match things on multiple characters. You can see all the eyeliner looks great. You can also change everything there. It seems like every part has the color wheel and the saturation and lightness, which is very great to see. I do note that the jewelry looks a little funky with like a big drop shadow. <laughs> I kind of want them to get rid of the drop shadow that's behind the jewelry pieces because it kind of distracts from the objects themselves or make the background lighter so then they don't have to do that. I know they're trying to keep it in theme, but I don't think that looks very good. Glasses looks fine. Also, I love that you can change every bit of it again. There's like four different swatches on the glasses that you can change, which is wonderful. And then we're going to be looking at the characters themselves in game. This is newer footage from the end of 2023, where you can see, I feel like the characters have gotten better and the talking to people, you can customize it so they use emojis and other things. So it doesn't have to be just words. And here's one of the earlier views of the characters and how they looked. Uh, a little different, a little rough around the edges. This is from the earlier trailer that you've probably seen a million times. And also the UI. I really want to talk about how the UI has been updated again, even here in live mode. You can see that there are a bunch of changes to how that looks at the bottom and it's more vibrant. You can kind of more easily understand what things mean. And I think that they have done a good job with the UI overall. I do like how things are more vibrant. There's a little bit more like crispness to the visual style. Next, we're going to take a look at crafting. This was something we saw, I think, in like August. So a little bit later into development, the UI has been updated already. And there's been a lot of changes to the visual style by this point. So it does look pretty solid. I think the crafting UI could use a little bit of a uh, improvement, but it's not bad. It, it works. It's clear. Like you can kind of understand what you can do. I do love that you're able to like substitute ingredients. So if you have a different type of flour, you can make a different version of something by switching out the ingredients. And that is a really cool way to kind of customize and make things your own. And it does change what comes out of the thing you create. I think that's a really great way of them to implement that. Then here we're going to look at how gardening looks. The animations still are kind of, I feel like he's a little too close to the thing that he's doing. And I noticed that in more recent videos. Hopefully they can like adjust where they do their animation because I feel like rather it be a little bit further away than like all right up on it. And then eating and cooking animations have also improved except there's still a lot of clipping issues with the hands and the characters themselves clipping into furniture but 
that will get cleaned up. I know they've mentioned that. Also, the animation of going into the dishwasher, like putting something in a dishwasher is a little bit rough there too, but we did see a lot more of the cooking and cooking UI is similar to the rest of the crafting UI where you can substitute ingredients. You can click on certain things to uh, see what you have and what you need. Uh, you can order the missing ingredients online for a delivery fee and a cost for the uh, ingredients themselves. If you don't want to have to go to a grocery store yourself, you can uh, do the convenient way of just having to pay that extra cost, but not uh, have to go do it yourself. And I think this was from the end of 2023. So this is one of the more recent videos. Oh no, they did say this is an older build, but it's a more recent video, but an older build. So they were talking about that the changes were gonna get better about the animations, but they still wanted to show it off, I guess. She looks so stiff. They gotta fix those shoulders, don't they? Something I really hope they can uh, work on. And the numbers being zero, one, or two, or whatever, are the cooking level of the item. So you have to reach certain cooking levels, obviously, to cook certain recipes. Now, here we are at the grocery store, and I do like the same sort of thing. You go to the item, you click on it, you purchase however many you want, add it to a cart, and then you have to actually go check out. <laughs> so it's actually like a grocery trip. It's not just, oh, go here and click on all of them and add them to your inventory. Like you actually have to shop and then pay for it after, which is cool. And I think the, the food items look really nice. Like they're pretty clear on what the objects are. So I think that's wonderful. The food works on like the icons that they have for the food. It makes sense to me. So it looks like there is a ton of ingredients, ton of different things you can purchase, all at different costs, obviously. That will add up. <laughs> They're buying a ton of stuff and then their cart. That's crazy. I wonder if there's like a quicker way because I feel like it's kind of like tedious to click on all of them one at a time like that. But maybe there should be a way to to put it in a list more so and you can like check all the ones you want and then say send a cart. That might be a nicer way to do it. So you're not just like individually clicking on each picture. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, but just a little bit more organized. Maybe that would be cool. And then you uh, go to the checkout stand and check out and it all goes to your inventory. Perfect. Then they go back home. They're showing that you can switch out like almond flour for regular flour, rice flour, rye flour, all these different flours that I haven't even heard of. They thought about all the uh, alternatives. So, you know, if you have any food allergies, you can kind of play that into your character's uh, lifestyle here. I did think it was interesting. There's a chance to fail when you're cooking based on your cooking level. So if you do something that's too high level, you might have a chance of making a purple stew called slop. <laughs> And I thought that was really a little good quirky thing that they've added. I want to see more things like that that can happen to make the game more, you know, like fun and unique and not just like, hey, you're a human living a life. Like, yeah, but The Sims and other simulation games kind of were built upon the quirkiness and the, and the fun and the like weirdness. So I'm hoping that they will add more of that. In 2024, Rod did mention something about that, but I'm not going to talk about that in this video because that's newer information that's not relevant. Now I think we're looking at the visual style just in and of itself and how the world looks and how the lighting and everything has looked by the end of 2023. I don't think I'm showing too much of the early footage. Uh, I did do a shorter video that has more direct comparison. This video is more of like a, here's where we're at now. Oh, getting run over. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's fine. I think they need to work on collision. People shouldn't be driving through cars and on their bike. <laughs> Or if they do, they should get like a negative moodlet that's like, oh, you got hit by the car. Now you broke a leg. <laughs> I don't know. I do think the water looks beautiful and just the overworld that you can just zoom out and immediately see everything without loading screens. It makes you feel way more immersed and able to like move around in the world and see what's happening. There's also hotels and round staircases, which I thought was really cool. And then the lighting at night looks really awesome. I do think the street lights and the car lights look really good. Like it's still like light enough where you can kind of see what's happening, but it does feel like, you know, darkness <laughs> at the same time. I think they've done a good job with the nighttime lighting as well. And like all the interior lighting also looks nice because each light source looks like it's giving off a really nice glow and it adds more atmospheric look to the interiors at night. And I do really like how the lighting looks inside. 
And here I just wanted to bring a little bit more attention to the color wheel in build mode. They have it so you can change the fabric colors. Each swatch is different, kind of similar to how it is in character customization, but for all the objects in the game. Change the saturation, change the lightness, add your own custom colors, pretty much all the great things you want to see with the color wheel customization like we saw with Sims 3. So this part really makes me happy and I just wanted to showcase it a little bit more for you guys so you can see a little bit how much you can customize and how cool it is that we have that freedom again in the build mode. Next, we get a really good look at the personality menus and seeing how the likes and dislikes kind of work and that there's so many different options that each character can have. I do like how this looks and I think that it is well designed. We also are going to take a look at the career page, which will show you what you need for promotions and what you need to do to level up in your career path. And so next we're going to look at all the crafting categories. We did kind of see a little bit of the crafting menu earlier, but there is floristry, beach combing, jewelry making, and archaeology currently in the game. And you'll be able to see a little bit about how each of those work and what the different types of things you can make are. You can like make different jewelry using those crystals, using the seashells to turn into other decor objects. And you are able to find these things scattered throughout the world in something called troves, which are just little sparkly glowing kind of uh, resources nodes that you're going to see in your world. And once you collect them, they will go into your inventory and all the items are randomized within each subcategory. So you don't know what you're going to get every time you collect a trove. It'll be some kind of shell or some kind of flower or some kind of gem, but it won't be the exact same. Even if you collect from the same place again later, it is still randomized, which is cool. I like the randomness of that. Another neat thing you can find is recipes within those troves. So you can learn recipes by finding them in the trove and then using that recipe at the crafting bench. And it does look like you can create objects to put in your house using some of the crafting tools as well as things that you can sell and upgrade your, you know, notoriety in the archaeology space or whatever. And you can make more money the more things you submit and share and sell. And lastly, one really cool piece of furniture was this table that has like flowers in it, I think. Yeah. So this was created using crafting. Look how cool and unique that piece of furniture is. There's just a lot of different ways to gather in this game. I hope they add more and I'd love to see improving upon the animations and everything else that I've kind of touched on throughout this video. It seems like there is a good amount of objects and variety, so you're not going to get too bored of the stuff that you will gather, but always want to see more coming in the early access updates. And finally, I just wanted to showcase a little bit of the build mode excitement, which shows a lot of customization, a lot of options. I think this was still before they've updated the UI a little bit more, so it might look a little bit different. But basically, there's some really cool things you can do when you're building. The roofing seems pretty simple. There's really good ways to work with the walls and the wallpapers and the crown molding. You can kind of place things wherever you want. There's really a lot of customization allowed when building in this game, and I really look forward to testing all the tools. It does seem familiar enough if you're a Sims fan, a Sims 4 builder, to probably pick up. And if you are new to building, hopefully it will also be friendly to new builders as well. And it seems like you can build on the outer edge of the lot, which is great because we all know the pain of not being able to build on the lot on the edge of a Sims 4 lot. I think this makes it so you can make use of the full space without any wasted space, as well as being able to customize the, where the poles go and what the interior sections of the fence looks like. And you can mix and match materials and it kind of like combines doesn't look great at some points, obviously, if you're trying to make it look good, but it's possible. And then you can also extend it. Once you've created kind of the fence you want, you can just extend it and then fill it in with more uh, pieces, it looks like. So I think the fence tool looks pretty customizable, just like everything else in this game. 
and I think it's gonna be really cool to play with. So since windows can be customized and shaped to fit, curtains can also be uh, reshaped as well, which is huge because again, so many struggle points that we saw with Sims 4 are kind of being noticed in this game and they're trying to make things feel better, it looks like. So look at that. You can you can line up the curtains to fit exactly the size of all your windows. And I think that's just that's just huge. It makes it look really, really good and custom. So you can do some really fun stuff with it. If you have an object on top of an object, like the table, stuff on it, you can move the whole thing because it's all connected and you don't have to move one piece at a time. Also really like the, the little feet icons that show up at the bottom of when you're placing an object. So then you know if an object is accessible or not, which honestly would save a lot of time playtesting in the end, right? And air conditioning and base game. Yes, they have wall vents, ducts. It looks like a bunch of other window mounted ones. So you can add your own air conditioning units, which will affect your electricity bill. So wall heights are also super customizable. There's not just short, medium, and tall. There's different levels at every level up to a certain height, obviously, for each floor. But you can make it just a little bit taller on one side or a little bit shorter on this one side. I think it'd be great for modern builds. There is no limit to how many floors you can go up, it seems. So we're going to have to test that. It's just how much your PC can handle. The more things you add to your game, the more levels, the more complexity, the harder it's going to be to run. So obviously be careful when you're building. Don't make like skyscrapers all over unless you have a really strong PC and this game runs well on it. I don't even know. But uh, that'd be interesting. It looks like you can make your own kind of apartment skyrise buildings and diagonal walls are a thing. Free placement to be either on the grid or off the grid at any angle you want. Another really cool feature is the ability to visually script and edit all the objects in the game without having to download like a third party uh, tool. They have made the system pretty easy to understand. And if you've worked with any kind of modding or game creation type tools, it makes sense. And I think it will be something that some people want to pick up. Not everyone will want to get into this stuff, but I just thought I would showcase it, show you guys that objects can be edited in many different ways. Here he's showing off how the dishwasher works and how the different objects have different reliabilities, different lengths of their cycle. It does seem like something that modders will have a good time with, so I wanted to touch on that real quick. Wasn't going to be a huge part of this video, but something that I want people to be aware of with this game is that it will be super customizable within the game itself without you having to do anything on the external side. You can make this game your own in a lot of different ways. Life by You seems to be living up to the name and I look forward to getting my hands on it hopefully in March when early access releases. So if you are too, make sure you're subscribed. Leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite features are in this game and what you'd like to see improved upon in 2024 because I'm sure they're going to be working on a ton of stuff and it seems like they are listening to feedback. The more things we talk about, the more things will get fixed and more things that will get better. Also check out my other videos I did this year now. This was kind of a recap of everything 2023, not talking about the new stuff. So if you want to see the actual new direction, check the other video I posted a couple weeks ago. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.